Here we go. So we got uh, N2 plus H2 yields 2NH3, and we need three of those. All right, what's the mass of this I gave you guys? 4 to 42.0 grams, right? And this is 5.00? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, just looking at the numbers, kids want to jump to the conclusions. Forensics? Okay. Um, five grams is way less than 42, so kids want to say, oh, hydrogen is limiting because there's less of it. It's not that easy. Because of the mole ratio, three to one, you know, it might not be. It might, but it might not be. So we have to calculate it. We have to prove it. So on an AP test, you might have to prove that this is limiting or that's limiting, all right? Now, there's a good chance it could be because you need three times as much hydrogen as you do nitrogen. But the molar mass affects that. So if I'm confusing you, I guess that's okay. So here's how we do this, all right? There's two ways to figure out which one is limiting. You can calculate the mass of NH3 that's produced using stoichiometry and proportions using this and then using this. Or you can use ratios and stoichiometry to figure out how much of each one we need. So I'm going to show you both because it's the first time we're doing this. Uh, I know it seems confusing, so let's just do the work here and then hopefully you'll see. So the first method, let's calculate the mass of NH3. Whichever one of these is going to cap, uh, produce the smallest amount of NH3, that's the limiting. So here's how we do this. I'm going to use nitrogen first. So it's a 1 to 2 ratio. I want you to write down exactly what I write down. All right, so this is calculating the limiting. So here, this is what I'm going to write. Finding the limiting reactant. And again, I'm going to repeat what I said. Whichever reactant when you do a proportion here, produces the smallest amount of NH3, that's your limiting. Limiting always produces the smaller amount of product. That's why it's called limiting. It limits the reaction's yield. All right, so one to two. Now, we need to convert this to moles. Or not that, this, we need to convert this to moles. Our X here means how many moles of NH3 will that many grams produce? So we first need to convert this to, to moles. All right, so why don't you guys do that quick, and we gotta plug that in here. So go ahead and calculate how many moles 42 grams of N2 is. I have a feeling we're not gonna be able to do it that way. That's okay. While you're at it, find your moles of hydrogen too. We're gonna to do that next, so do that. You should be done with that. How many moles of N2, Trevor? Uh, three. Try again. You used 14, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's 28 because it's nitrogen gas, so it's 1.5. 1.5 moles of N2. It's all right. That's why we practice this. What about moles of H2, Liz? 2.5. 2.5, right, because we're using 2 grams per mole because it's H2. So this is 1.5 moles of N2. This is, uh, what did we just say? 2.5 moles. Do you have to worry about the three in front of it? Yeah, that, that, yes. But not finding the moles? No, no, no. So when you have a balanced equation, 
It's just showing you the ratios of how they react. It isn't an actual amount. It's just like a, it's like the um, accepted versus a, a measured. So like in real life, the measured amount in lab or in, in, in the real chemical reaction, wherever this is taking place, these are the numbers that matter. This is just the paper numbers, like how it should work. So no, those don't factor in. The only way, we, the only reason uh, we use that is so we can use them to figure out, okay, how much of this will we make? Am I making sense there? Yeah, so no, you don't have to ever use that in those calculations. All right, so if one mole of nitrogen produces two moles of NH3, 1.5 moles of N2 will produce how many moles of NH3? So that's what I'm doing here. That, that's what this proportion is all about. Again, I can, I can do this the same method with canceling of the units, but I like to do this with proportions. It's just the way I prefer to do it. So I apologize if you're confused because I jumped back and forth in the two math methods, but hopefully you can stay with me. So um, one mole of nitrogen produces two. How many moles of nit um, NH3 will 1.5? So obviously this can be more than two, right? X is what, how many? Three moles, right? So three moles of NH3. So when you do this reaction, it's called the Haber process, when, the, when you do this reaction in real life, if you have 42 grams of nitrogen, that will produce three moles of NH3. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing with hydrogen. So now instead of a one to two, it's gonna be three to two, I'll do that over here. So we have three moles of H2 for every two moles of NH3. That's on paper in the book. That's the uh, you know the accepted values. Like I was just talking to Liz about. We don't have that. We have five grams, which is 2.5. So we don't have three moles. We have 2.5. So we have 2.5 moles of H2. How many moles of NH3 will that produce? We know three makes two because of the balanced equation. How many moles will 2.5 moles of H2 make? So you cross multiply. 5 divided by 3, right? What's that? 1.67. So 1 yeah. moles of NH3. So this is one method, and I tend to lean towards recommending you guys use this method. I'll show you the second way to do it. But the reason that I think this method is useful because it tells you the amount of the product. So it actually answers part B as well. So because nitrogen produces three, right? So 42 grams of nitrogen produce three moles of NH3. And five grams of hydrogen produce 1.67. So because hydrogen produces a smaller amount, hydrogen is limited. So this is how much will actually be produced because once hydrogen is completely consumed, it stops reacting, and this is all you're gonna get. So this actually never happens. This does not work. This, this, this is just to see which one is limited. This never occurs. You don't use all 42 grams. So that means N2 is excess, H2 is limiting. So H2 is limiting, and N2 is excess. And again, how do I know that? I'm just gonna repeat, repeat myself here. Whichever reactant using proportions, using stoichiometry, whichever reactant produces the smaller amount of product is always your limiting. That works every single time for every reaction ever. You just need to remember to do the method. So I'm gonna say it one more time. Whichever reactant produces the smallest amount of product. So again, how do you do that? Convert to moles, use the ratios, do what we just did. The one that produces the smallest amount is always your limit. Trying to be clear, trying to go slow. Okay. Let me show you the next method. And I'm gonna hopefully have time to give you the problem set for you. Here's the other method. So that method was finding the, the amount of NH3. This method you're gonna use these numbers to figure out how much of each reactant you need. This one's sometimes a little more confusing, but stay with me. All right, 
So in order for this reaction to be successful, I need a one to three ratio between these two. So if I have one mole of N2 and three moles of H2, now I'm gonna look at it from nitrogen's perspective. So if I have 1.5 moles of N2, so that's what I have available, that's what I have. This number here, H2, is what I need. I'm sorry, I labeled that wrong. I'm sorry, erase that, cross it off. This, this is the number here, this is what I have. I have 2.5 moles of hydrogen. That's how much the problem tells me I have available to react, which is 2.5 moles, so five grams, 2.5 moles. This little proportion is telling me how much I actually need. All right, so if I have 1.5 moles of nitrogen, I need three times as much because it's a one to three ratio. In order for this to react and to work correctly, I need three times as much. That's one to three. That's what, that's what the whole point of a balanced equation is. So when I cross multiply, x equals, what's three times 1.5? 4.5. So that's how many moles of hydrogen I need. If I have 2.5, but I need 4.5, I don't have enough. It's going to be depleted. It's gonna run out before it reaches that number. That's how I know H2 is limiting, because you have less than you actually need according to the ratios. So again, that means H2 is limiting. Let me show you the same work from the hydrogen's perspective, and that's probably all we have time for. So if you have N2, H2, this time uh, we're gonna do X for N2, and we're gonna go 2.5 for H2. So this time I'm plugging in what I have for nitrogen, how much hydrogen do I need? This time I'm plugging in what I have for hydrogen, how much nitrogen? So this is how much I need. I know I have 2.5 moles of N2. I know I have that because I just count, oh, I'm sorry, 1.5. I know I have 1.5, we already calculated. So when we, when we do the math here, all right, it's going to be 2.5 divided by three. What's that? What's 2.5 divided by 3? 0.833 moles of N2. That's what we need, right? We have 1.5. We have way more, almost double, what we need. So that's how we know N2 is excess. So those are the two ways to figure out which one is limiting, which one is excess. It doesn't change. That method is how I do it still. Because I'm like hundreds of these problems. All right, uh, the only thing that changes is the reaction and the numbers. And that's what the demo is all about. So I'll use the demo tomorrow. We'll, well, we're gonna have to stop. We'll continue this tomorrow. We'll do the demo, and I was hoping to maybe set up the next lab. Uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, let me give you your problem set. I suppose you have no homework per se, so make sure you work on the lab. So use your time wisely. If I don't give you something to do, you always have something to do. Um, you know, so do something. Don't just say, oh, no homework, no do Because that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, so that's the people over there. There might be an extra one. All right. Um, all right, so this has to be on separate paper. Uh, this is due next Wednesday, or whatever that date is, the 19th. Um, and I always give you to the end of the day. Same thing with labs. Usually, anything that's due, like a lab or anything like a long problem set, you have to the end of that due date. Okay. Um, so um, these are reactions that uh, you need to learn about and how to write them out. I think chapter four. Yeah, chapter four in the book will help you with these. I suggest working together. Of course, you can use the internet in the book, um, but uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this. I just wanted to get this to you. All right, so tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more, but this is due next Wednesday. Separate paper, though. Do I have any extras? No. What are you doing during this period? Fifth period.